What's up? I'm back. This segment, I'm going to talk up a little bit about the Ohm universe. And I've spoken about Ohm before, the concept. But I think a lot of people didn't realize it's it's uh, basically a universe that we're creating. And, you know, when you think of universe, think of it like, you know, you can look at the comic book universe. You have the Marvel universe. You have the DC universe. You know, when you have certain animated shows, that's a particular universe. You know, Transformers is a certain universe. When I say universe, I'm meaning it's a a collective space where one creator or several creators put together ideas and creations. And so, like, let's say, in the, in the because this is a little bit easier to describe it from the, let's say, comic universes, right? You'd see, let's say, X-Men, Avengers, Justice League, whoever, Dark Stars, the, the Green Lantern Corps, all those individual stories will be connected in the sense that, you know, if... Bobby is a crime fighter on Earth, and Johnny is a crime fighter on Mars. It's in the same universe, so in theory, Bobby and, and John can meet up with each other if one goes to each other's planet. So it ends up being an interesting concept, and it's, it's you know we we take it for granted because it's it's a concept that has just hasn't always been here. Like it's, when you see it now, you see it like you say, "Wow, it's you know it's pretty cool." But I think that's one of the reasons why Marvel has had such great success in the cinematic universe is because every time you think of it, you, you go to Guardians of the Galaxy movie and you, and then you say, wow, this is the same universe as the Avengers. So that can, um, they, they, they can meet. And for comic book fans, we've, that's been like that for a long time. We see it in comic books, there's crossovers all the time. But for the movie, uh, or for the movie audience, it seems to be a newer phenomenon. Well, here, we here at Ohm wanted to take it a little bit further, in a sense. And the fervor we wanted to take it is that we wanted to to come in and do the same thing, but on a bigger scale. So what I mean by a bigger scale is the weakness, you know, whether it's a Star Trek, whoever, whatever universe you want to look at it. And the writers are coming from a purely Venetian angle. What happens is it ends up being very limited because they're going to only see things from one point of view. So, for instance, like, I love combo movies. I love comics. Like, I love comics when the combo movies, right? I love comics, right? And what's the week? What's the what's one of Achilles' heels you when, you when you look at comics and you always hear people talk about, right? Especially the movies. Oh, there's only, let's say, one type of character for a certain race, right? So, let's say there's only white characters. Oh, there's no male characters. I mean, not male. There's males, obviously. There's no female characters. And I know nobody would say this part, but I, even, even from my perspective, I, I would say this, too. Even the characters themselves are very nationalistic. Meaning, I'm writing a comic book. I live in America. I live in New York. New York becomes the center of my universe. Right? It's cool. I think it's a little limited, though, in my opinion. What that shows is a lack of in mental integration with other cultures. So when you have a lack of mental integration of other cultures, it's going to affect your work. It's going to limit your work. It, wouldn't be, it doesn't make the work bad, per se, but it makes it small in scope. It's like if you look at Game of Thrones, and it's a universe for sure, but certain people can't feel it because they only see mainly one type of person or because it, it just comes off like elitist. So we here in Ohm, when we get into Neptune, which is a higher form of Venus, we have a higher standard. So you just can't come in, like, for instance, it's a cinematic universe, it's not even cinematic, not yet, it's, it's a comic book universe, right? And what happens? Well, to be in, in, that, in this universe as a writer, as an artist, you got to step your game up, to be honest. You got to be like, I, even, if, even if I make a character that's based in New York or based in Canada, right? I have to have the mental capability of understanding what's going on in other countries because that would alter my creative process. So it would make it better. It will make stories that more people can relate to. Then eventually, if I'm really good, I'll make different characters, right? Like, like for instance, right now there's four co-creators in Ohm, right? Myself being one of them. I have characters from, you know, Pacific Islands, right? Characters that's based in Brazil, characters that's based in Mexico, characters that's based in America, characters that's not even based on Earth, characters that's based on different universes. So I have to come up with a blueprint for two or three different universes. 
it makes your stories more balanced. I and mean, what it does is it makes things where people, where, where many people can relate to, characters of different nationalities, because that's the world that we live in today. I got characters that's black power. I got characters that's ra white races, Aryan races. And sometimes people will look at it and say, well, I can't, I'm, I'm a black guy. I can't make a, a racist white character. And when I make a character, it's not, if I make a, a, a racist character or a character, it's not for the person to judge them. It's for the, actually the person to what, Venus and Neptune supposed to do open you up to experiences you may not have ever had to be able to go into that the mindset of that person on the other side and see why they think like that not really to villainize them because the character I have who's a white racist he's actually not even a villain to figure that so in a sense and just like the character well character I have who might be black power more Afrocentrist he still thinks of things on a global on a globalized scale probably one of the most um, important people in the own universe from my, from my end. So when you look at it, that's what Neptune is supposed to be. When you expand, it's supposed to be the racing and the coming together of all boundaries into one. That's the reality of it. So in order to come into, into one, you have to come from different viewpoints and put it in your work. Even if you don't put it visibly in your work, it still has to speak to the work. Like I like I love Black Panther as a character from Marvel. I love it. I love. I mean, he's he's a really cool character. Is he one of my top ten? No, <laughs> but I respect the character. When I look at Black Panther, I could tell Stan Lee kind of saw that or a whole bunch of characters of, of Caucasian descent and make a, a black character. Cool, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about going into that experience and crafting the character based on that experience. It's a big difference. Not reacting to circumstances. So the same thing. I wouldn't just make like that's why I don't. That's why I don't have anything against comics because it was a set, it was made in a different time. I think sometimes when people want to put a Hispanic Spider Man and like you don't want to do that. It comes off forced. What you supposed to what you supposed to do is it's supposed to resonate in your work from just your experience. And if you don't have the experience, you're supposed to use Venus to go out there and experience other cultures. That's why I make videos about Bollywood and Nollywood and things. And I make, hip -hop, I make a hip-hop video. I make sure and put other cultures in it because it's supposed to expand your consciousness. It's not supposed, and it's supposed to expand it kind of winningly, not forcing it to expand. That's the difference. And another aspect that we're going to come from on the own that's going to be a little bit different is that obviously other sci-fi writers, you know, you know when, you, when you're a creator, whether it's an artist, a sci-fi writer, right? Business gets mixed in. We are what's called copyright. So I couldn't just make a character, like, I couldn't just, like, you know, <laughs> make a character and then put the Avengers in it or Justice League in it because somebody else owns that. That's obvious. But as a writer, what own is a little bit different. What one criteria that we have is that when we created the universe, we took many of the different universes that people see that people have, right, that you have access to. And we said, what if, what, like, let's say you're into um, quantum physics and science, right, and you, and, you, and, you, and you uphold the multiverse theory, right, and the multiverse theory is there's many universes, every possibility plays out. So the Marvel Universe, DC Universe, Malibu Universe, Image Universe, Transformers Universe, Harry Potter Universe, all exist, there's just different universes that came in because there's from different possibilities, right? So, like, you know, different possibilities happen and different universes happen. We're, we're manifested from that. That becomes obvious. But what if someone was able to create the universe that they all came from? And some people would say, well, how do you know it all came from this universe, right? How would you be able to describe that artistically because you're just looking at it from your angle, so you create it, so of course you're going to say, well, this is the prime universe and all of us came from that. So how would you take that concept and, as an artist, as a writer, and, and repackage it and sh give it to the people? Well, you could only do that, number one, you could only do that if you're coming from the Neptune aspect. You could only do that if, number one, you're, you're a fan of sci-fi, you're a fan of art, you're a fan of many different genres, right? You put it and then you look, you say, all right, all sci-fi writers are tapping into the imagination. They're tapping into something. 
I'm not going to be one of these people who tell you, listen, Transformers are real and <laughs> Superman is real. I'm not going to tell you that. That's still coming from a place where an artist can subconsciously view realms that are beyond the physical, but then they repackage it. And when they repackage it, delusions come into it. So one way you know is because if you say, well, I have a character and, you know, let's say he just gets powers. Let's say, ex like, you know, mutants, right? They just get superpowers. And they just get superpowers. And because they just get superpowers, you know, they just wake up and one day they have powers. Or, I mean, they were born with it. Well, you know, as many people may, may know, from my viewpoint, the occult is real. And when it's real, a lot of these things that people are writing about are twisted versions of real co um, concepts. Now, I'm not going to tell you they're twisted because they're Illuminati and they want to distort it. I just think, you know, when imagination comes in, you it gives you access to things that your other senses don't have access to. So what naturally happens from that perspective then is that you may glean real stuff, but you may repackage it, and once you repackage it, delusions come in. So for a lot of the sci-fi, the creative universes, first of all, because it's coming from a, a, only a Venetian aspect, which is a lower form. Ne v remember, Venus and Neptune are the same force, just two different, two different octaves, basically, right? So because they come from a lower form of it, their biases are going to be present. Their biases, whether they are Christian or Muslim, the, the, or sexual orientation, their culture, their race, their location, they were, they were born. All those biases are going to come. Even, you, you see it in the cinematic universes now, where Marvel wants to be fun, DC wants to be dark. All those are biases, right? So what happens is that when they create the universes, it's going to be fragmented universes that they create, so it's not going to be something that everyone can feel. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean everyone's going to like it. Everyone doesn't like sci-fi. Right? Everyone doesn't like anything. <laughs> like, like Some people like quarters, some people don't. But the difference is they make universes where it's just flawed in terms of you could, you're only going to relate to it if you come from one aspect. This is art. Everyone is not going to like your work. But at the higher level, your work should be relatable to people who are even outside your circumference of, of culture and social class, or even intellectual. Like, you know, like intellectuals like something, mainstream like something. But when you're talking about the prime universe, you're presenting yourself as the prime universe which gave birth to all other universes. So number one, in Ohm, when we're creating the prime universe, we have to take all other science fiction universes in perspective and then make a product that reflects all of them combined but this is business so you can't say names so you're not going to say names but it's just for the other people to look at or to know some of those sci-fi um universes right which we respect then to look at our work and see how our work is designed to fit as the missing piece so the best way i could explain it imagine if you were in a universe where transformers marvel characters dc characters harry potter star trek universe which is more the future a lot of the horror stuff, you know, the Aliens franchise, Predator, all these things were in the same universe as well as your everyday topics, you know, jazz, hip-hop, world politics, football, sports, your everyday topics, you repackage them as one, but the concepts, not the characters themselves, because obviously the characters themselves are from other writers, but the over, but when you're making your concept and you say, this is own. And when we make it, you see how we're presenting it as the universe. This is the difference. We're almost presenting it as the universe that gave birth to all other universes. So that's a very ambitious way of doing things. And it's very hard. But at the same time, it, makes you, it, opens, it opens you up as a writer for new things. New possibilities that other writers may not see. Because when the other writer sees it, they're looking at it as just coming from their possibility. And... Or from their aspect, or from their viewpoint, basically, which is cool. But this is coming from a universal aspect. So it's like imagining I make a new sport, but I got to make the new sport out of the ashes of the old sport. And then when I make the new sport, I got to say, well, this is not really a new sport. This is where the old sport came from. It's very challenging. But at the same time, I think as a reader, they will love it because, in a sense, from our perspective, we're doing it just beyond, going beyond science fiction. I've always said when we do OM, it has to be kind of almost like scientifically sound as much as it could be. It has to be 
culturally sound, but it has to be even as literature, good literature. A lot of times in science fiction, sci-fi writers and regular writers are put in two different caps. You know, you ask like who the best fifty writers, you almost can never get a sci-fi writer. Because why? When you watch a sci-fi, you know, movie or you read science fiction book, I think the books are a little bit better than the movies. The movies are terrible. You can just tell the writers just put, especially in the movies, they just put anything together and say, hey, here it is. It's a science fiction. I don't really have to think. I don't have to think as a writer. So in Ohm, we say, no, we want to be good writers. We say, no, we, we're going to come in and make science, science documentary that has nothing, science documentary that has nothing to do with science fiction. Why? Because it's important. Science fiction and science have a relationship that goes back since the beginning. When it got separated, the scientists stopped dreaming for the stars. Science fiction writers started going above the stars and going in la la land. So from this perspective, it's a challenge, but it makes it fun because, you know, most people, if I say I'm writing Harry Potter, I'm coming from the Harry Potter universe. I don't care what they did in Lord of the Rings in terms of as a writer. But in Ohm, we're saying, nah. This is the creation that gave birth to all other universes. So, in a sense, in a way, it has elements that all of them would have, but something different because it's Neptune. It's something different. It's unique, obviously. Obviously, it couldn't have their physical elements because, you know, as a writer, you get sued. So, from this point standpoint, even if you've never seen, for instance, you've never seen Lord of the Rings, you don't care about Lord of the Rings, you never care about Game of Thrones, you may not even know it exists. When you watch Ohm and you deal with exploring these places as fictional universes you go back to those things and say oh okay kind of understand how that gave birth to this i kind of get it that was the that was the goal of ohm in a sense to create a universe that presents itself as the prime the prime universe that all other ones came in and manifested from and it's kind of like flashing the scientific roots where the science scientists say you know you get one universe it gets birth to another universe it gets birth to another universe and like it keeps infinitely creating and that's what we present as the Ohm universe. The Ohm universe will be kind of like more comic graphic novels, but also get into horror and also get into real stories that may not be fiction at all. When I say it may not be fiction, it's fiction, but it may not be based on science fiction. It's fiction. It's based on, you know, I make up a family that's the Cosby's and I say, this is the Smiths, right? This is the Smiths. There's no superpower, just a regular family. Yeah, it's going to be like that too. It's going to be an umbrella that encompasses many different elements. So... From this point, even when it comes to from Ohm, certain characters that we have, I would introduce them. And in a sense, as a person who likes sci-fi, I'm excited to present it. But also I'm excited because as a person who respects the occult arts, the end goal in this sense is unlike other science fiction where you watch The Matrix, you watch whatever you may have, Transformers. And you just get into delusions. And you just say, alright, that's cool, I like that. You start decoding. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to present it as a tool to get the person into the occult. So when a person reads this or watches this, and they say, oh, I, I kind of want to I want to find out more about the occult. You email me, I tell you, go to this school. This school will help you. That's the difference. Regular science fiction, you just get into delusions and, you know, you put on a cape and you jump out the window, you Superman. We say, no, 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 no. You you." read our books watch our videos you're interested in the occult you email us we send you to we send you to a place oh you go to school you can learn if you're sincere or if you don't want to go to school here's the, here's 20 books got a whole bunch of pdfs boom here it is good luck that's science fiction operating how it's supposed to operate it's a big difference normal science fiction doesn't do that and just gets into delusion so ohm is something where we're going to take a much different approach. So, welcome to the universe. Till next time.